What is up YouTube? That's here and today I'm super excited to be bringing you guys my very first Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl team building guide. And I know the number one question you guys are asking me is that's a how can you make a team building guide for a game that isn't out yet? And the answer may surprise you. Believe it or not, these are remakes. So that means they're remaking a meta that has already been established. And for those of you guys that haven't really noticed yet, this is going to be a singles team building guide based off of what was meta back in Generation 4 OU slash UU. So good thing is, like, basically everything you need to know about this game, you can actually find out by playing OU on Pokemon Showdown right now. You can go into the team builder, uh, you can mess around, you can go right in here, select new format, go to Gen 4 OU, and you can see the Pokemon that were good. And, you know, we already went through that whole video where we went for the... We went over the full move decks the other day. So, like, a Pokemon like Gyarados is going to have the exact same playstyle. A Pokemon like Fortress, it's going to be exactly the same. The only slight change to some Pokemon are things like Kingdra getting Scald. And so, like, Special Kingdra might be a little bit better than Physical Kingdra, where in Gen 4, I think Physical Kingdra was a little bit better. Uh, things like Metagross losing Explosion. Maybe it doesn't, like, lose it. I didn't really notice, but, like, Explosion doesn't... Uh, cut their defenses in half any more effectively making it a 500 base power move um things like suicune getting scald things like swamper getting scald so and uh things like zapdos losing like heat wave and uh you know obviously hurricane wasn't on zapdos back then so there's very slight changes but believe it or not the meta is just gonna be these Pokemon played in these ways. So what I'm going to be doing is doing my absolute best to give you guys a crash course in how to build teams for the Gen 4 singles format, giving some, giving you guys some good tips you can attribute both to this format or to any other format you realistically want to play. Remember back in the day also as well, Gen 4 OU games were played without a team preview and that heavily influenced how teams were built. So I'll be talking about that, talking about the strengths of uh, you know building a team without a team preview, but I will say that there is already confirmed to be a team preview in this game, so you know take that with a grain of salt. Um, the one thing that I think we really should be doing though is breaking down what like, what roles each Pokemon can play in the Gen 4 meta, and then how to accurately like build a team around those roles. So I would say there's there's a few roles worth respecting in this game, and that's going to be um, I'm going to say Pivot Mons, and that's going to be U-Turn Mons. Uh, you turn leads because leads are really important because remember there was no team preview back then so whenever you're building a team you really want to make sure that your lead is something that's really really good so we're going to have you turn leads as one of our uh i guess one of our categories that we're going to look at the next category be sure to set this to gen 4 so you can see all the pokemon is going to be stealth rocks leads all right stealth stealth All right, so Stealth Rock Leads, another really, really important part of the game that still sees play today. Like, um, you know, a lot of people just like to get their rocks or hazards up very, very fast, and then from there just, you know, just play the game normally. Um, another type of lead that is pretty common back in Gen 4 that's still going to be common in these new games are going to be Suicide Leads. Now, these are going to be Pokemon that, uh, well, think about it like this. If your opponent's trying to set their hazards, their Stealth Rocks, if you lead with something with a Sash, you guarantee get value out of that Sash on your very first Mon. So a lot of teams like to put their Sash Mon on the front, and then a the difference between like a Suicide Lead uh, between like a... So for example, like an Aerodact would be a Sash Mon that's also a Stealth Rock Setter. But a Suicide Lead would be something like maybe like a Weavile that would be able to punish something, taunt the Stealth Rocks Mons, KO it and then maybe trade just a little bit more effect maybe like hit the next Pokemon once before getting KO'd so you get like a 1.5 effectiveness instead of just going one for one and this is definitely like a, a type of uh you know Pokemon that you know saw a lot of play so suicide I should be able to say that on YouTube right <laughs> Suicide Squad, that's a movie, right? So uh, anyways, Suicide Lead's really, really important. And then the last sort of lead that we're going to see is going to be things that I like to call counter leads. And this is something that a lot of the player base didn't really catch on to until maybe even like, like when you go into like a high level Gen 4 game now, because the meta is still advancing, you're going to see people use more counter leads. But this was something that you didn't really see unless you were fighting against the, the like the world's best players um, back in the day. Basically... Counter leads are things that beat these three types of leads, right? So uh, counter leads are just really, really bulky bruiser Pokemon. A good example of like a counter lead that's really, really popular right now 
is Machamp. Uh, Machamp doesn't set rocks, it's not a suicide lead, it doesn't get U-turn, but it dumpsters all three of these things and trades more effectively uh, against the next Pokemon that comes out. So it's a good example of a, just a generally good Pokemon. And counter leads, I think, are the, the smart way to play once the meta is established. But, you know, more than just talking about what type of leads we are, we're gonna break down some Pokemon that fill these roles so you guys get ideas in uh, your own teams before we go into the next phase of the video. So U-turn leads, right? Um, these are gonna be Pokemon that get the move U-turn. It's a pretty good move. And remember, there is no Volt Switch in Gen 4. So you know what? I, I think there is gonna be Volt Switch in this new game. So this is gonna completely change to add Volt Switch. You know, things like Zapdos, I think are still gonna get Volt Switch. Raikou's gonna get Volt Switch. They're gonna be some great Volt Switch mons. But for now, just focus on what gets U-turn and what can pivot. And the strength of pivoting off the front is you're able to lead See what your opponent's going to do, because, like, remember, we just broke down what all three of these, sorry, all four of these type of leads do. Um, if you want to, I don't know why that lags right there, but basically, you can see which one of these leads your opponent's going to go with, and if you have a good matchup, like, for example, um, a U-turn lead would probably be okay against a suicide lead, because you U-turn break Sash, then go into your wall, and now their Sash really doesn't work, and you can just KO their, their suicide lead, and don't, they don't get that super effectiveness. Um... Or that they don't get to be as effective. A uh, U-turn lead can be great against a counter lead because you can U-turn into it in certain situations and go into the thing that counters their counter lead. So, for example, if you lead with a U-turn Mon, like a Flygon, you can U-turn into their Machamp. Um, they go for like an Ice Punch or whatever. You bring out your Cresselia, don't take any damage at all, and then you just KO it with a Psychic. Um, if you go for a U-turn lead um, and they have a Stealth Rocks Mon, well, that's your bad matchup, right? Because you can U-turn or do whatever you want, but they're still going to get their rocks up. So then you'd have to U-turn out to your Spinner, your Rapid Spinner, and then from there play a little bit longer game. So it's not like U-turn leads are the best thing in the game. They definitely have their strengths and their weaknesses. But the good thing about U-turn leads is you have the... Uh, decision of choice like I, I personally think U-turn leads are going to be the best in the game just because they're generally faster sometimes they hold choice scarves and yes they sometimes can carry taunt yes they sometimes can carry stealth rocks as well to make them a little bit of a mix of a both but uh, the cool thing about U-turn is you know you get to choose how you want to play the game at your own tempo and so they're going to be really really good just how U-turn and Voltwitch are great today they're still good back in the day so uh, U-turn lead let's start off with Azelf um, Azelf is going to be pretty good so Azelf gets U-turn so you can see it right there. So Azel, for those guys who don't know, gets 115 base speed. Pretty fast, pretty strong, both physical and special. And we're going to see a lot of talk about Azel in this video. Um, the next Pokemon, we're not going to flesh out full sets. We're just going to talk a little bit about each one and then why they're good in these situations. Um, Azel's really good. It gets things like uh, Taunt. Uh, it gets things like Stealth Rocks. Um, it gets things like Explosion. Um, it, it gets things like Psychic, uh, Flamethrower, um, Rain Dance. Any, anything you really want, this Pokemon does get. Um, this Pokemon's like really, really busted. Probably one of the best Pokemon in the game. Top 5 for sure. And uh, if you guys are fans of like Let's Go, um, this is basically the Aerodactyl of this format where you kind of just leave it at every game and your opponent just hopes that they don't lose. Next Pokemon is going to be Staraptor. I really, really like Staraptor in this format. This thing usually is built with a Choice Scarf. And, uh, you know, 100 base speed is the cruise control for cool. This is the 100 base speed is anything slower than that is slow. Anything faster than that, or at least 100 is fast. So uh, we're not even going to talk about like Salamence and Garchomp because they were banned in those formats. So I don't know if they're going to be legal, but Salamence has a base 100 speed. Garchomp's 102, which is a little bit faster, but Straptor's base 100. Um, Zapdos is base 100. The more we go down these lists, you're going to see a lot of Pokemon have base 100 speed. And so it's a really, really popular number. These guys usually like to be built 252 Jolly, even with the Scarf, so they'd be able to win their speed ties. They do get the U-turn. They get access to Taunt. And what's cool about Straptor as opposed to other flying types is yes, it gets the Brave Bird, but it also gets close combat. And it was like the first real Pokemon to really get that big secondary fighting move. Before this, this was not common. Um, even if you were scarfing it, I still sometimes think you can throw the... Uh, does it get Taunt? It does. I thought it got Taunt. I thought it got Taunt. I, I, I super thought this thing got Taunt. Um, what was the last move that I usually threw on this? I think it was Quick Attack usually that I threw on it as the last slot then. Um, so I, mean, you can throw, like, I guess it gets like Double Edge and stuff like that you can throw on there. But I kind of like this as my Straptor set. And uh, I really just think that Straptor is probably one of the best leads in the game. I think that you're always safe leading a Straptor. There's not a situation where you're like incredibly game losing behind by leading with this. Because if you lead with a Straptor and they lead with a Stealth Rocks lead, 90% of the time Stealth Rocks leads are going to be physical attackers because Rocks, 
are usually on physical mods. So you're able to intimidate that mod, pivot out, and then just be fine. Um, if they with the suicide weed, we already talked about the advantage there. And if they weed with like a counter weed, well, cool. Especially against like a champ, you can just brave bird that thing. You know what I mean? Um, or just you turn out if you feel like it. I think Strapter is really, really good. And this is going to be also great as like a late game sweeper. So like really, really respect Strapter. Expect to see a lot of this thing in the meta. And uh, yeah, Strapter is just absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to use this thing again. Uh, other U-Turn weeds that are really popular are things like uh, Infernape. Infernape is going to be really, really popular. Uh, it doesn't get access to hidden abilities. There are no hidden abilities in this game. But uh, this guy's usually built with a Sash. Uh, let's just throw it on there. So here we go. We got Sash. We see like U-Turn. Uh, Infernape does get the taunt. So and you can taunt their Stealth Rock setters. You can even set up Stealth Rocks of your own if you want like a, you know, a little bit of a more suicide Stealth Rocks mod. Uh, but then it also gets like a close combat. It can be built physical or special because it, it has like great uh, attack and special attack stats with a 108 base speed. It's pretty, pretty speedy. So Infernape's a great mod. Um, I also like using Toxic on it back in the day. Um, it doesn't get Toxic anymore. But Infernape's great. Um, you're going to see a lot of Infernape and... Um, yeah, great, great starter. You know, it doesn't rely on a hidden ability or anything weird. I'm sure hidden abilities for these starters will be in the game, but Infernape doesn't really need it. If anything, Blaze might even be the better one with like Fire Punch because you can actually clock your Sash and get like a Blaze Boost onto it. So uh, Infernape's gonna be pretty popular, so be able to respect Infernape. So let's go see more U-Turn mods. Uh, Flygon's definitely U-Turn mod. You know, I hate saying respect Flygon here, but these guys usually built very similar Straptor. Choice Scarf, another base 100 speed mod. So we're gonna see like U-Turn, and then Flygons were usually built physical, so we're going to see like a Dragon Claw. Uh, we're going to see Earthquake. And uh, usually the last move on these things was Thunder Punch, I think. If I'm if I'm thinking correctly, they like to run Thunder Punch, and it's just for Gyarados. It's a little just for Gyarados. Thunder Punch for Gyarados. Um, but yeah, another base 100 speed mod. They usually built 252, 252, right there. See, click these buttons. Easy click the buttons. Like, this is just kind of the sets that these things ran. 252 is pretty popular. And because all their base speeds, all these Pokemon are so popular, you have to go speed natures to be able to, like, not lose speed ties against yourself. Um, so, yeah. Also, like, Thunder Punch good against Straptor and things like that. So, Flygon, this is probably the best meta that Flygon's ever had. Um, especially after things like Garchomp and Salamence were banned into Ubers. Uh, and I think, I think, what is it? Salamence got banned first in Heart Gold, Soul Silver once it got Outrage from a Move Tutor. And then Garchomp was banned, I think, eventually a little bit after that, because Garchomp's still busted. Um, but yeah, uh, you're going to see a lot of U-Turn Flygon. All right, look up U-Turners. So Zapdos did get U-Turn, and people did use play with that. I think Selby was also, or sorry, Jirachi and Selby also did see play. But I think I'm going to dip down a little bit more into some UU mods that were definitely good enough to be an OU that used U-Turn, and that's something like an Ambipom. These things are usually built Sash. And uh, let's go, like, they usually still had Fake Out, uh, just because it was good to break Sash on the opponents. Uh, they usually still had some sort of, like, double hit technician type thing. So you see, like, double hit here. Where is double hit? So you see, like, double hit. Uh, I think it got Taunt as well. And then uh, you just U-turn. So it's like, this does multiple things. You can Taunt Stealth Rock Setters. Uh, you can go for big damage with double hit. And you can just U-turn out against anything else. And again, this thing has 115 base speed very fast. So you're going to be able to reapply the fake outs, double hits, U-turn in like multiple times per game. And it's going to be really, really good. Uh, even as a UU mom, this thing still saw like a lot of play. And I would still definitely respect this thing in the Gen 4 meta coming up. Because there are no, I don't think the Rocky Emblem's in this game. So like you don't really have to respect it. There's one more big U-turn mod I think that's worth respecting. Let's see if I could find it. Because it's not, it's not Celebi or Jirachi. I think those are pretty standard. I think it's Scizor. And I, I, I personally would categorize Scizor as more of a counter lead. But it is the Pokemon that stabs U-Turn out of this whole thing. Scissors were usually built back in the day with, like, leftovers. Um, obviously, the technician here, you see something like Bullet Punch. I guess we are just building all these mons. Um, Bullet Punch, um, Super Power was added in uh, Diamond Pearl Plat... In, in, uh, in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, probably from the Move Tutors. But I don't think it would have Super Power in this game. I think we checked the other day. Uh, it, it loses access to Bug Bite, so if you want to run, like, X's or that's fine. But we see the U-Turn here. And uh, I personally like to build my scissors a little bit different with like Roost and things like that. Um, I actually use my scissor set is is actually this, which makes it more of like a counter lead because it does multiple different things and can pivot if needed. And so like being able to set a light screen in front of a Pokemon that doesn't stab the flamethrower if you're faster than them by putting just a little bit of speed investment. 65 is a good number because it outspeeds all the base 60s. Um, you put just a little bit of speed to make sure you outspeed specific fire mon or specific mons that can tech flamethrower uh, to beat this guy. And then you set the light screen and I actually used White Clay Scissor on mine. That's how I like to run this Pokemon. Um, you make it so you get a free 8-turn light screen. And then you just U-turn out. 
and then you're totally fine. You can come back in late game and just spam bullet punch and win the game. I usually built it heavy attack with uh, just enough speed and just enough HP to not die to those same fire attacks. But very, very good mon. And so these are the popular U-turn mons that are going to be the leads. Uh, one good thing about the Scizor as well is, again, I, I tend to categorize Scizor as a little bit more of a counter lead because it's a, such a slow U-turn compared to the others. But the good thing about the most of the Pokemon in this little tier here is they U-turn first, ask questions later. Scizor tends to soak a little bit of damage and be played a little bit more like a teleport mon, where you let them do their thing, then you U-turn and then bring out the thing you want safely. So if you have like a Sash mon to bring in, or you have like something that you don't want to take damage first, uh, like, like a setup mon or something, you can bring that in safely and then force your opponent to switch out. And then from there you can set up or pin them even further. It's up to you. But uh, Scissor is a really, really unique option here that still definitely fits the play style. So those are all of the popular U-turn leads. Now, again, I just want to give a little bit of a, you know, disclaimer. This is These aren't going to be as popular or as required. These, these were required in this format back in the day uh, because there was no team preview. Now that there's team preview, you know, you can still have these things, but your opponent knows you're going to leave with them and they can see which one you have. So first of all, like if I have a Staraptor, and my opponent knows that I have Staraptor as my U-turn mon, they can lead with their, uh, you know, thing that automatically checks Staraptor, like their crazy, I, I don't even know, like Scarf Thunderbolt Gengar or something, right? To be able to check that, right? And so it's not as good. Um, if, in my opinion, it's not as great, uh, but they are still something worth respecting, and you guys should definitely think about adding them to your teams if you're looking for a solid lead. If you want to follow a flowchart and get better and you have absolutely no experience at all, these are great Pokemon to leave with. Uh, up next are going to be Stealth Rocks leads. And these are really, really popular as well. Um, you can kind of tell from the way that I play that I'm not as much of a Stealth Rocks leady guy as I like the U-turns, the counter leads, and things like that. Or even like a hybrid lead, something like an Infernoid that can set Stealth Rocks if needed. Um, but the first Pokemon we're going to add with is Azel. You're going to start to see a little bit of a... Uh, of um, I always mess up this word, but you know what I mean. It's How do I always do that? It's such an easy word. It's a word that just means, like, uh, a pattern. It's always the pattern. I always mess up the word pattern. I always just, like, lose my train of thought and it just ruins the video. But a pattern. You're going to see a pattern of uh, a lot of Azel. Uh, so, yeah, Stealth Rocks. It gets Stealth Rocks. It gets literally every move you could ever want on this Pokemon. This is the Cruise Control for Cool. It's busted. Another Pokemon is going to be Aerodactyl. Uh, Aerodactyl gets Stealth Rocks as well. And the cool thing about Aerodactyl is it gets 130 base speed. So just like in Let's Go, you are able to just leave with this and say, I'm setting rocks. It gets things like Taunt as well. It gets things like Earthquake. If you need to beat things that are setting rocks, you know, a lot of those things are going to be like Metagross, Heatrans, things like that. You can Earthquake those if you want. And it gets a staffed Rock Slide. So uh, not Rock Polish on that so it gets Rock Slide, and again, these guys usually build very similar. You have to go You have to go with this Eevee spread just because other Aerodactyls are so popular. Also, there's a lot of Pokemon, for example, like, uh, I'll just throw this out here, like Gyarados, for example. So Gyarados, right? If I were to use a Gyarados, and I were to go, like, a 252 Gyarados, you can see that an Adamant Gyarados um, wouldn't be able, after a plus one from a Dragon Dance, to be able to outspeed the Aerodactyl if I'm Jolly. If I'm Jolly Aerodactyl, they have to be Jolly Gyarados. Uh, to be able to actually have enough points to outspeed me. So you have to be jolly with Aerodactyl and things like Aerodactyl, Jolteon, all these 130s. They really have to be uh, jolly. So base 80 and 81 speed Pokemon like need to be jolly as well to be able to outspeed them. Gyarados is not a Stealth Rock setter, but I was just using it as an example because this is going to be a 1.5. So you're going to take 50% um, of this number, which is about 143, add it to it to be able to actually outspeed the 394. Anyways, up next in these Stealth Rock setters. Can you tell I like Gen 4? It's a really, really good format. Um, Blissey is a great Stealth Rock Setter. Blissey is absolutely amazing Stealth Rock Setter. And everyone thinking like, oh man, what about Chansey? There's no Eevee Light in this game. So you don't need to worry about Chansey. You don't need to worry about Porygon 2. You don't need to worry about Dusclops, anything like that. You can just uh, use their actual evolutions of like Blissey and Dusnor and Porygon Z and stuff like that. But Blissey is great Stealth Rock. Uh, gets Natural Cure. I like to use the Serene Grace. I love using Serene Grace. Blissey is the meta where I created that Pokemon where you'd have like Stealth Rocks. Sorry, not Stealth Rocks. You'd have a soft Wild, Thunder, Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Serene Grace, Heavy Special Attack Investment. But uh, yeah, most people just tend to go like Stealth Rocks. Uh, most people are gonna go like Thunder Wave. And we've already checked, it does get access to uh, Seismic Toss. So like this is a standard Blissey set back in the day. And a lot of people just went like this. Remember to go full defense investment on your Blissey. It's super, super important because it's such a low stat. Most people went like this back in the day because they didn't know any better. But uh, it's actually a lot better to kind of go like this 
just because your HP stat is so bloated, you're basically getting diminishing returns on it, and you can just steal the last four and then make sure you're outspeeding other Blissies and things like that. So this is a more optimal EV spread. You can even go even more optimal here. You don't have to use this exact move set. Most people tend to use it with leftovers. Some people like to put Heal Bell on it somewhere as well, make it a little bit of a cleric for the team. But if you're leading with it, it's not really going to have that option, um, or you, you just wouldn't use that option. This is a much better lead. This is also back in the day when you could Thunder Wave, Electric types, and things like that. So it was much better versus like things like Raikou and Zapdos. But standard Blissey set right here. Um, up next is going to be, you guys know what it is. The best Stealth Rocks mod on the format is going to be Skarmory. Skarmory got multiple forms. I should call this the Hazard tier, um, just because Hazards are basically what they are. You don't have to use Stealth Rocks. You could use Stealth Rocks if you wanted, but you could also use like Spikes, right? Spikes were just as good. Toxic Spikes were good. Things like Roserade still definitely usable. Um, Skarmory, this was the meta of Skarm Bliss for sure. So like something like, like that is more so what you saw. Um, you usually pick one of these, either Stealth Rocks or Spikes. If you had other Stealth Rock setters, um, Stealth Rocks was more common because it was a TM in that game than Spikes was. So you'd usually, you would usually just use Spikes here and Stealth Rocks on a different Pokemon that only got rocks, something like the Aerodactyl, um, something like the Infernape, and you would actually go Whirlwind here. And so I love using Skarmory. It's absolutely amazing Pokemon. Um, remember, there's no team preview, so being able to Whirlwind out your opponent's Mons and able to see their team and put them in situations, have them take those uh, neutral hazard damage. Um, it's really, really nice to be able to do uh, preemptive damage as well as scout your opponent's team. Skarmory's are tend to be built, uh, you know, just like this. And again, a lot of people only put four. Um, I really think that these these are all generic spreads. Obviously, you can do so many different things. I'm giving you the bare bones, 252 squads, just showing you the two stats that are most important to put points in right now. I personally like to use a Skarmy that has a little bit more in Special D. You can, if, by investing just a little bit more in Special D, you can make it so things like Thunderbolt from Not Stab Mons is a three shot. And uh, that's really, really big because that means they actually can't do more than Roost, which means if you eventually get to a situation where there's like, a, for example, like Sandstorm Moss Forever in this game, you can get to a point where you can just KO things like Gengar, for example, with just Sandstorm damage if you roost it out. Um, and again, this is before uh, Sturdy kept you at 1 HP all the time. It's only protected from Oko moves, so it's actually just better to use Kenai in this format. Um, but yeah, that's Skarmory. Very, 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 very solid mod. Up next, Stealth Rock mons. So things like Fortress were popular. I love using Fortress. Um... Uh, things like, uh, let's, let's just put T-Tar here. I think T-Tar is fine. Again, like I said, weather was permanent back then, so it's not going to be as prevalent anymore. But Trantar is still a great mon. You still tend to see leftovers built on this guy. So Stealth Rocks was super common. Um, back in the day, Trantar used to use Pursuit. You know, it's not going to have that option, I think, in this game. I think Pursuit's gone now. But it was a really, really good counter lead to a lot of the other, you know, Azelf leads and stuff like that. Like, Azelf really struggled with T-Tar. So, uh... There's a great mon there. Uh, I think Thunder Wave is still pretty pretty common on wall T-Tars. And then you just saw stuff like Crunch and uh, Rock Slide. Pretty, pretty common. Um, and again, most people tend to build it just like that, which I think is definitely wasteful. You should be putting a lot more points in defense and special D with a little bit in speed on your T-Tars, just in my personal opinion. But again, this is generally how this Pokemon was built over, over 10 years ago before people knew any better. Um, it hits really hard though, and it does get those rocks up. Uh, let's see, last little Stealth Rocks mon. So I want to say as well, there's a lot of mons that just get rocks here. Like a lot of people would say, you got to add Metagross, you got to add Heatran, you got to add Fortress. Um, eh, I think they're, they're, they're good ones. Um, there's good and bad ones. Dawn Fan was probably the, I'm going to put Dawn Fan up here because you did see a fair amount of Dawn Fan. Uh, over those other things just because Dom fan was also a spinner um so Dom fan again built with leftovers uh so you would see like stealth rocks uh you would see rapid spin here so this is how you phase out rocks and then a lot of people actually ran ice shard just because dragons were still really really big and earthquake so it was decent coverage and uh Dom fan was like okay again people tended to run Dom fan similar to skarmory where you built it just like this but uh I, I, I'm not a big fan of Dom fan, but you are going to see big people dip into the lower tiers to pick up mons because there's just not as many mons in this deck. So this is a pretty standard um, like list of Stealth Rocks mons, but I just want to go, before we even go into the next one, I just want to show you. We're going to go into the Suicide League just to show you something like all of these Pokemon that get Stealth Rocks are viable. Like every single one of them is a viable option for the Stealth Rocks role. A lot of people like to go Heatran. A lot of people like to go Mammoth Swine, Metagross. Um, but I would say a lot of these tend to be more in like the counter weed area. Um, for example, like we're going to get into the counter weeds like Metagross and Swampert are great counter weeds because they can beat the Pokemon that set said rocks first and then you set your rocks, right? You just kill their stealth rock setter first 
and then you're fine. But uh, let's, we're not getting ahead of ourselves, and let's look at some suicide weeds. Now, like I said, suicide weeds um, are going to be Pokemon that can KO a Pokemon and then use move like uh, I talked about Explosion, for example. Like, let's just look at Azelf. So, Azelf again. Pattern. See? Pattern, pattern. Uh, it gets Explosion, right? So, Explosion is a 250 base power move, and you can read the effect of it. Target's defense is half during damage. You could put Explosion on any Pokemon. It was a TM in that game. Let's just, let's just type a Pokemon to get Explosion. So, you can see. Gengar went Explosion, Heatran went Explosion, Magneto, Metagross. These are Pokemon that, like, you didn't even need a single point in attack, and you can KO anything. Like, Gengar Explosion would KO pretty much any Pokemon that didn't resist it. Like, oh, you got a Salamence? is dead. Like, you got a Garchomp? is dead. You got, like, a Raikou? is dead. Zapdos? is dead. Just pop Explosion. So, Suicide leads back in the day were Pokemon that would like to KO one thing. They usually built, like, a Focus Sash, right? They usually built Sash. Uh, so, you'd trade, like, Azelf would beat the opposing Straptor lead. Just throw that out there. Like, they, they hit you with a Brave Bird, they take 25% recoil, you KO them with a, a Zen Headbutt or something, right? And then they send out the next Pokemon and you explode. So you basically get a one for two trade. Now that's not really going to happen as much. You still might see Explosion on Azelf just because it is a good way to make sure, you, you can go just Stealth Rock Explosion and maybe you can get a one for one off your rocks um, that way with Azelf because it's attacks that's so massive. But you're not going to see as many Explosion text so i'm not really going to try to mention that as much but we're still going to talk about suicide leads that are really, really popular Azelf was the number uno even without explosion you can just trade one for one one for two against a lot of pokemon with this guy while also potentially still setting rocks while also potentially taunting while also potentially setting up a uh, rain dance to enable things like kingdra and other you know swift swimmers and stuff like that so Azelf can be really really good and also remember there is no like pelipper if i'm like why are you rain dancing you just use pelipper pelipper didn't have drizzle in this format it had keen eye because there's no hidden abilities so other pokemon that are suicide leads um i would say something like uh, a weebile would definitely fall into that category um weebile could also be kind of looked at as a little bit of a counter lead but the thing about weebile is like a lot of the things weebile could just kill stuff like that's the thing like weebile woke up and chose violence every single time you ever use one of these and you did see weebile around smile it still got access to taunt so you could taunt stealth rock setters if you want but you would just kind of swords dance and just start ice punching stuff. And you had ice shard if you needed it in case the, you know, stuff got out of hand. Sometimes if you wanted to add another bit of coverage, you'd cut the ice shard for brick break. And uh, even Weavile was super, super common. So you still had a base government like that. But great Pokemon. A lot of people used Weavile. Um, other Pokemon that are counter leads. Or sorry, we're in the suicide lead. We're not in the counter lead. Um, they're, they're, they are different. Counter leads tend to be a little bit more bulky. Um, I'd say a suicide lead that's worth respecting is gonna actually be something like a uh, crowbat was definitely a suicide lead it's not really worth respect i'll put it up there for now but um yan mega is a a good a good suicide lead people usually build this thing with sash it gets speed boost one of my favorite pokemon you tend to go protect on this thing and uh, you get access to like air slash and you get access to bug buzz if you even wanted a little bit more damage to be able to one shot those counter leads you can cut the focus sash for a life orb um, to be able to make sure you actually get those guaranteed KOs. And I personally like speed boost over tinted lens. It's my personal opinion because the move I like to use here is hypnosis. Um, and you may think this is a super degenerate set, but if you can, basically the way it works is if you can get a KO on their first mon, which you totally can by going hypnosis, put it to sleep, two shot it with literally any of these moves while also praying for flinch with air slash. The next Pokemon, you know, you had a suicide lead. You already went one for one. If you can throw up a hypnosis or even any damage on the next mon, that's going to be a value trade for you. So uh, you can actually go get away with going modest on um, on Yon Mega, but timid. I still tend to go timid just because Yon Mega is a little bit common, um, and you want to be able to win speed dives versus other Yon Megas and things like that. And sometimes like uh, Scarf Mons, like you want to be able to outspeed Scarf Mons once you get your plus one. So I, I tend to still go timid. Let's see other Mons that are suicide leads. I would call Gengar a suicide lead with Sash. Um, so like Gengar is a great example. Uh, it still gets Destiny Bond. So like this example, you can just. KO one Mon, get your Sash Clock, next Mon come out, Destiny Bond, or Explosion. I think Explosion was more common here and see a little bit more Destiny Bond now. Gengar's a great option, still gets Levitate in this format. And, you know, Gengar's, they're basically just built like, oh, not like that one, though. <laughs> they're basically just built like this. And, you know, normally Gengar's would have things like Taunt. They normally would have Sub if you were playing against good players. But the Sash sets would have something like uh, Sludge Bomb. Um, they would. This is before Sludge Wave. They have Shadow Ball. And they would have, if you didn't want to run the Tantra Destiny Bond, you'd run something like Thunderbolt, just, just for Gyarados and Skarmory. Um, 
and it is a kind of standard Gengar set, in my opinion. So Gengar's a good example of like a suicide lead. All right, let's see. Uh, other examples of suicide leads, like obviously Infernape is a good one, uh, just because it can, you basically just set your rocks and try and like one shot somebody. Uh, Mamoswine is probably the best example of a suicide lead. So like Mamoswines are usually built Sash as well. Um, you'd still use the Oblivious, I guess. Actually, yeah, this is before it got Thick Bat, right? So you can use either, it doesn't really matter. But uh, Mamoswine got Endeavor Ice Shard. And so you'd go like, like look at this set. It's a good set. So, uh, not Earth Power, Earthquake. So like that's a really, really good set on like a Mamoswine. So you go uh, Endeavor, you'd soak the damage. Uh, you get put to one and you Ice Shard someone. And then you just can do, you can Endeavor again if you're faster than them. Ice Shard again if they're faster than you or Stealth Rocks, Earthquake if you need to. So if they're playing super passive and they're not going to clock your Sash, you can set up Rocks or Earthquake those things. So Mamoswine, pretty good anti metamon It was better when like things like Garchomp and Salamence were still uh, allowed to be used, which they will be allowed to be used at the very start of the game, so you might see a little bit of it. But this is an example of like suicide leads, like you are trading, you are leaving these Pokemon in until they die, which separates them a little bit from the U-turn leads or even the counter leads, because they're just aggressive mons that, remember how I started, said at the very start of the video, you can use these things because you know your opponent can't have hazards up on the very first mon. So you just lead with these guys and you say, I'm going to trade one for one with you and take out your rocks mon or take out your lead. And then from there, there's no more leads. It's like trading queens, you know, um, right at the start of a chess game. So pretty good options. And the last options are going to be counter leads. Now, again, this is the ones that I think are probably the the best in the game and then Azelf's still the best one wow look at that pattern um Azelf usually you can build a sash like life orb choice band you can put any item on this thing it's just going to be good and the reason why Azelf still falls into a counter lead role is because it can do anything it gets levitate um it can explode it can fire blast it can fire punch it can set headbutt it can set screens it can go knock off it can set up with nasty plot uh it can set rocks it can go sub and go thunderbolt trick u-turn like this Pokemon can literally just do anything. And so the fact that it can do anything, like literally anything, <laughs> means that like it can always counter you and you always have to respect it. So just watch out. It's faster than everything. It's stronger than everything. And uh, you may think this, this makes it sound unbalanced, but like Azelf's not going to win the game by itself. It, oh, it sets up for other Pokemon to do well. In my personal opinion, it's, it doesn't get like Dragon Dance or Agility. That's basically all it gets. It can use Nasty Plot, which means any Pokemon that has like a priority move or like a Choice Scarf can just come in and just roll it over. Um, also, like Gyarados is a pretty good mod against Azelf most of the time, um, especially now that they took away like Explosion Cutting defenses because it doesn't get any real electric attacks, I don't think. Yeah, it gets it gets Hidden Power Electric, which is not in the game. It gets Charge Beam, which they never ran. I guess it, I guess, sorry, did it get Thunderbolt? I guess it did get Thunderbolt. I didn't know that it got Thunderbolt. You never, you never saw it. And I mean, I guess you did. Yeah, you did. You saw it. But like, look at that coverage. Like, like look at that coverage. I don't know. Well, yeah, you didn't. You really, you just didn't see Thunderbolt that often. Most people, would, they'd put rocks there. They put explosion there because um, it worked the same way. But yeah, like that's that's nutty. Like that's that's ridiculous coverage in this format. Um, Blissey would be good against this, but then in back in the day, they would just go like. You know. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Next Pokemon on the counter list, we've talked a little about it. It's gonna be Machamp. Um, Machamp's just super, super bulky. Um, definitely with the No Guard here. Uh, people still tend to go leftover. Sometimes you go with the Lumberry. A Lumberry is still a great item in this. Remember, there's no Assault Vest. There's no Weakness Policy. None of that stuff. Uh, you just got the Dynamic Punch. Um, you'd go like Earthquake. And uh, basically, like Machamp. That's all it really needs. Like needs Ice Punch. And then the last move, I think people usually want Bullet Punch, and they just they want like that. That's basically it for Machamp. And uh, pretty good mod. Pretty good mod. It can trade pretty well versus basically any Pokemon in the game. And it, if they were leading Azelf and you have Machamp, you can switch up Machamp for a T-Tar, block the Psychic or whatever move, and then Azelf's trapped. Remember, T-Tar Sandsteam would break the Azelf Sash, and you would just go Pursuit, right? And that's how. That's why Azelf sounds really, really good on paper, but it was not like a game all end all win the game immediately mod. Uh, like something like a, a Mewtwo would be in that situation, just because it, it, it gets one shotted by literally anything. So Machamp's great mon. Um, other counter mons are going to be things like Empoleon. I think Empoleon's great because again, uh, you, you don't, you're not going to need your hidden ability. Torn's going to be fine, but it gets Stealth Rocks if you need it, right? And uh, it can set up a bunch of different things if you actually need it to. It can be physical. It can be special. Um, basically, you're just really, really unique typing. Water Steel was very, very unique back then. People tended to use it a little bit more as like a toxic mon. But like Stealth Rocks Roar, great set. You know, you can go physical or special on this thing. Most people tended to go a little bit more special just because Straptor was a common lead and you didn't want to eat those big Intimidates. But like, 
like a leftovers and polyon with this type of set with a special attack investment and sometimes you put a little bit of speed base 60 is a little bit slow sometimes you want to be able to outspeed other base 60s you know make sure they're outspeeding uh you know my champs and stuff like that um you know other than that employment was okay i wasn't a super big fan of employment but i did see it a lot um it was a great check uh, sometimes they would tech like uh, ice beam to check like dragons and ground types and they would just go surf like that's usually it's usually kind of how you saw this pokemon sometimes you'd see the flash cannon over like the roar or something like that uh next in the counter lead department let's see i think metagross is a good one where metagross is similar to employment it gets stealth rocks it gets Explosion if you want to use Explosion. Uh, it gets Earthquake. In terms of Steel Attacks, like... Let's see. So in terms of Steel Attacks, it gets Iron Head, but I think that's only through the Move Tutor, which isn't in the game. So I don't think Metagross gets Iron Head anymore. Uh, I could be completely wrong, but I think we looked at it the other day. Uh, Bullet Punch are the usual people use. Sometimes people you'd see, like, uh, they'd tech different, like, Elemental Punches. They'd use Zen Headbutt if they wanted to. But Metagross is a great anti-meta lead as well. Um, usually the Earthquake and some speed investment. If you wanted to go speedier Metagross, sometimes you saw Agility Metagross. Uh, you could check things like Heatran, but generally people tended to use like Metagross. I tended to play my Scizor a little bit more like a Metagross. You're going to see how I like, I talked about my Scizor. We're going to put Scizor right here. I think Scizor is still just great. And this exactly the same Scizor as we saw back here. It can counter the things that it needs to counter. It can like bullet punch things like Azelfs. It can bullet punch Aerodactyls. Um, but, you know, for example, it's mostly just like a U-turn. It's like a hybrid um of like a u-turn slash counter lead and also like my scissor uses superpower sometimes as well which makes it really really good at checking like a lot of the niche mons like t-tars and stuff like that um and not having to like you know because u-turn wouldn't kill a t-tar for example i guess the last counter lead i would say is probably gyarados um and the reason why gyarados is a decent counter lead is because a lot of the times if you take a look at like 90 percent of the pokemon on like this list right here so all these Pokemon, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, potentially 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I know I, I most said a couple Pokemon that might have clear body or something like that, but 20 Pokemon, that's almost all of them. Bro, like Intimidate. <laughs> like, that's literally it. You you literally cruise control for cool Intimidate, and uh, you just go Dragon Dance. Uh, you just go Dragon Dance. Um, you sometimes go Taunt. You can go Earthquake here if you want. You don't really need it. Um, this is before, like, Bounce was in the game. So you just go, like, Waterfall. Like, this is usually... And sometimes you'd see, like, the Ice Fang here. Um, Ice tended to think, like, this is where most people would stick to Earthquake. So, like, this is a standard, super standard Gyarados set. Like, bam, there you go. Um, and you have to be Jelly, like I said. Um, and this is, like, believe it or not, people just kind of ran it like this. Uh, just because there's not as many, like, good items. I think Lum is still a really solid choice. Um... But yeah, this is basically how people ran Gyarados back in the day. And if your opponent was leading with one of these Mons that had like a, a big physical Mon, you would just intimidate it, make sure it couldn't kill you, get one to two Dragon Dances off, and you start going to town. Now, the reason why it's not like amazing game all, end all, beat all is because your opponent could just send out a Sash Mon next and trade with your Gyarados. But Gyarados still checks like most of the Mons that set rocks. Things like a Powdon, things like Heatran. Um, uh, even Skarmory, for example, gets kind of messed up by uh, Gyarados in the long game. Uh, Domfan, uh, Aerodactyl, if you intimidate the Aerodactyl, I can't really do that much. So Gyarados is a good example of a counter lead that I would say is definitely worth respecting. And uh, another cool thing about like uh, Gyarados being a counter lead is it goes into our next kind of point and is how are we actually going to team build? Now that we know all these leads and all these options, how are we really going to team build? Well, remember, like I said back in the day, there was no team preview. So if I were to lead with a Gyarados... And you'd be like, cool, I have an electric attack for that Gyarados. I'm going to use it. I would just switch into something like an Electivire. Um, and so that kind of goes into the next role where it's like, we're going to talk about team building and how to build a default team for this format. Now, there's one formula that works that you can follow and it will win you so many games. It's going to make everyone listen to this the best player. If you're not already doing this, this is how you should be building your teams for a Gen 4 singles format. And this is definitely going to follow over into especially in this new format. Like, I don't care how many new moves and how many better players there are. This will still work. You need three physical attackers and three special attackers. And what I categorize those as is a special attacker is any Pokemon whose attacks don't really care about Intimidate. And the reason why I'm... So, that, that means, like, for example, it's, this is basically a Blissey Clause. So Blissey would be categorized as a special attacker if its only attack is Seismic Toss, or if you have just a Pokemon whose only attack is Nightshade, which those type of Pokemon, or something that who, like, does 90% of his damage through, it's, it's like an only Toxic Staller slash, like, Subseeder. Those would categorize as a special attacker, 
because they're not affected by Intimidate. Intimidate is still super big. Uh, Straptor gets it. Um, Gyarados gets it. Salamence, if it's going to be legal, gets it. And you're going to see a lot of those Pokemon. So you definitely have to respect that, even in the singles meta. So um, you have three physical attackers and three special attackers. From there, you break those up into having one physical wall, one special wall. It would be nice if you could have a rapid spinner. It'd be nice if you could have a rapid spinner. But uh, let's give it, let's build a sample team that can kind of easily explain how this is going to work. So this is my favorite Gen 4 team. Uh, this is the team I took to a lot of tournaments, won a lot of money with, and just played with for, for years. This is my favorite team I've ever made. Um, it's going to use a Scizor, like we talked about. I think Scizor is a really, really good mod. I'm not going to go into building the whole team here, but it uses a Scizor. It's a physical mod, right? It's a big physical mod. It has it was that anti-meta, like, light clay, um, U-turn, bullet punch lead that I talked about before. Um, the next mod is going to be a Gyarados. And you can see already that if uh, my Scizor is in danger, not Gyarados Mega Lamel. <laughs> if I could just switch into a Gyarados, if I'm afraid of a fire attack, the... I can have a guaranteed switch into something to stop that as well as get intimidate to then regain board pressure and then i can potentially waterfall earthquake set up with a dragon dance whatever i would like to do i can't so it's really really good uh lead combos right off the bat and then again um the next pokemon i would add is a an electivire like i was just kind of talking about with motor drive i mean just if my gyarados is afraid of something you can see i already have a couple big four times weaknesses but those four times weaknesses are so telegraphed i can tunnel my opponent into respecting those options which gives me free switch-ins, which actually gives me advantage. Plus one. That's a plus one turns. That's where the name comes from. You get the plus one free turns by gaining advantage off switching instead of being in a disadvantageous state. So you can see these are three physical Pokemon that have great synergy together. Um, things that would beat Electrovire, like ground types. Well, those lose to the Gyarados. Things that would beat, um, I don't know, any of these other Pokemon. So they're just dumpsters everything. So it's like absolutely fine. Like, I think it's a, there's a really, really good core here. Again, not as good without the team preview, like with team preview added. Um, but still, this is what I like to play with. Um, and then from there, we need three special attackers. So uh, let's add a special attacker in Cresselia. Cresselia is a good special attacker. Let's add a Blastoise as a potential spinner and just a secondary water type to be able to bait people to going with Electivire. I liked Blastoise in this format. Blastoise was not OU, but I did like it in this format. I felt it played really well. It plays kind of like Gastrodon with the potential of like Rapid Spin. I, I used it with both Counter and Mirror Coat, and I liked it a lot. You've seen me use this on the channel. And last but not least, I'm going to put a Blissey here. And Blissey will again fall into the special attacker role because it's not really affected by Intimidate. Its only attack is gonna that deals damage is going to be Seismic Toss, and uh, it's, it has Toxic as well. So... Uh, yeah, generally, these are going to be three special and three physical. You can see I have one big physical wall is going to be my Cresselia. It's going to be heavy HP defense. It's really going to be like this. <laughs> like, that's like literally the set right there um, with like a Calm Mind Toxic set. And then the Blissey is just inherently a special wall that like Cresselia and Blissey are both like super, super, super bulky. Like even Uninvested as Cresselia still has like a ton of special D. And I have Calm Mind, so I can get even more special D. So I have one physical wall one special wall i have one tank i i've I just a ton of tanky pokemon but like one rapid spinner so again you want three physical attackers three special attackers at least one physical wall at least one special wall and if you can a spinner um and then from there like i liked like this is a super well-made team that cuts a lot of corners normally what you would do is you would add one physical sweeper and one special sweeper so again this is my team we're gonna take a look at a completely other team I'm going to build you guys one from scratch. So uh, let's go into a new team here. Make it Gen 4 OU. So let's add three physical attackers. Let's add... Um, I don't want to add Azul Because like it's too easy. It's only too easy. You just click the Azul button and win the game. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm going to go Aerodactyl. Uh, Aerodactyl is a great physical mod. can get rocks. So we've covered the rocks. And you should always try to have a rock setter. Um, this, this team over here, it's rock setter was Blissey. Right? That's kind of how it went. Um, you should always have a rock setter or some sort of hazard setter. If you don't, you should just try and have one. It's not that hard. So there is a physical mon. Let's add a second one. Um, I could add Infernape, but then that's a, that's a lot of water weakness. That's a lot of, that's a lot of weakness right off the bat. Hmm. I could add Titar. Let's think about it. Let's build a good team. I think Metagross might be a better option because Metagross would be weak against like ground and fire and stuff like that. Aerodactyl mitigates that. So it's two physical mons. We want one more physical mon that isn't so much like earthquake dependent at this point. 
And again, we're playing in a meta with like Salamence and Garchomp banned, so this is where like Gyarados would come in. So it's like a secondary mod. Yes, this is two weaknesses to Electric, but we can definitely mitigate that. This is two weaknesses to Rocks, we can definitely mitigate that. We're going to have to get a Spinner. So those are our three physical mods. Um, actually, let's use a different mod. Let's use a different mod than Gyarados. Let's just use Infernape. Well, I think Infernape's a good mod. Um, still a little bit ground weak, but it will be able to work with it. Uh, we are going to want a Spinner though, so let's go into Spinners. Rapid Spin, Rapid Dash, let's go. So um, I think Starmie is a great Rapid Spinner. Starmie is probably the best Rapid Spinner in the format. It's the fastest one. And uh, just come in and go for Rapid Spin. And if you want to read them switching in Gengar to be a ghost type block Rapid Spin, you get Psychic it. So it's really, really nice. So I like this a lot. And then from there, let's see. Huh, let's see, what do we want? We need a physical wall. We could have technically used Metagross as that, and a special wall. So let's just look at walls. Most, most normally, people would just go with, like, Skarmbliss. That's usually, like, they would just do this. But we already have our physical attacker. So we're going to need a better physical wall. We need a better physical wall that falls into, like, a special category. So something like a Suicune. Or a, I'm going to go with the Swampert here, because we already have, like, Electric Weakness, Electric Weakness, so Swampert here. And you can use, like, a special Swampert with uh, Surfer Scald, for example. So, like, this is a pretty decent team. Um, Blissey's going to be Special Wall, uh, just because that's how Blissey's are built. You don't have to put any points in those to just make them a Special Wall. Um, so you got three Physical Sweepers, three Special Sweepers. Um, not three Physical Sweepers, three Special Sweepers. I'm getting ahead of, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's just let's just talk about let's let's build this team. Um, I will actually just build this team real real quick. So we're gonna go Sash here. There is no item clause in this format, so we're gonna see Stealth Rocks. We're gonna see uh, Taunt. We're gonna see uh, Earthquake, and we're gonna see Rock Slide. And we're gonna click the 252. Easy peasy. We're gonna see Metagross. Um, we don't necessarily need Stealth Rocks on this Metagross, um, and we don't need. Explosion. We're not, we're not going to use the Explosion because it's not going to be in the game. Um, I'm probably going to build this with a Choice Band. I think I'm going to go Band Metagross. And I'm going to build it with uh, Bullet Punch. Earthquake. And then I think I want the Ice Punch still. And then I think I'm going to go Zen Headbutt. And I'm going to go Band it. And we're going to do our EVs. Why don't you go Bulky Band? Let's put the last four here just because I think it might might be just a little bit more beneficial. Infernape's going to be Sashed. And so we're going to, do we need a second rock setter? Not really. I'm actually probably going to go with a counter Infernape, just because I think that might be a lot of fun to play with. Um, I think counter is cool. I think we're going to want the um, fire punch because we're sashed. We don't, really need, we don't really need flare blitz. So fire punch, close combat, and probably just U-turn here. And then Starmie is going to be, Starmie's a little bit weird. You can build Starmie like three or four different ways. We're already using a couple sashes and there are no, there is no access to like heavy duty boots in this format. So people tend to go leftovers on Starmie. Um, I think that's still totally fine. You could even go with like a damage reduction berry with like a ghost reduction. Um, is that a Kassib berry? I think I might do that just so I don't get one shotted by Gengars. So like I can switch in on the Gengar and still punish it. Uh, this is rapid spin here. So we're going to rapid spin. Uh, we're definitely going to want the Psychic. We're definitely going to want a uh, Surf. And Thunderbolt's good. It's hard to say exactly what I would... Like, I, I think a lot of people would go Recover here and they would go Leftovers. That's what a lot of people do. I think I'm just going to go um, Ice Beam here and just try and be a bully. And then I think that's absolutely fine. And you see, we're going with plus speed nature with a lot of these mons just because we want to be able to make sure we're not losing speed ties. So this guy definitely gets Leftovers. Um, we're going to go, like... Seismic Toss. We're going to go Soft Boiled. I'm going to go Toxic here, just because I personally like Toxic Blissey a lot. And then I think the last move, we could go Aromatherapy if we really wanted to. Um, we could go Stealth Rocks again if we really wanted to, if we wanted like a secondary Rock Setter. I think Aerodactyl is going to be absolutely fine as a Rock Setter. Um, let's just go... We could even go like Protect to be able to weave in more Leftovers. I don't think that's even bad. I, re I really don't even think that's like absolutely terrible. Um, I think that I'm probably just going to go heal, like aromatherapy though, just to, just to be safe. And then we're going to go 252, 252 plus minus and put the last four there. And then the Swampert, put leftovers on our Swampert and we'll go something like, this is a bit of a weird one. We can go, we can totally go rocks here as well. I know we're going to want surf. I don't think it gets earth power. It does. Wow. I'll take that. Let's see what else we got here. Roar is great. And I usually just go rocks. 
and this is our physical wall. So again, it suggested that, but I'm like, nope, go back. I'm gonna put the last four here just because I really like the last four in those situations. So like, is this team valid? Awesome, team valid for Gen 4 OU. So I'm gonna put my Metagross at the front and I'm gonna queue into a game right now. So you guys can see the uh, Heatran lead here. Heatran is a pretty common lead. It outspeeds the Metagross, but you can see we have tons of mods to beat that. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go switch in the Swampert. Yep, there's the Flamethrower block. We take those. I'm gonna set rocks because we pin him super hard with both of our moves. We're gonna get a free rocks here. And so having mods you can switch from at the very start of the game is super, super important, especially in like a meta where, um, you know, there's no there's no team preview. You can't see those things. You're trying to switch in and block the Surf. We take those. I, again, we don't have to worry about Scald in this meta, so I'm just going to go for a Roar. I don't care if you do anything weird. Yeah, Roar definitely phases out the Acid Armor. I love to see that. Titar, we're going to scout a little bit more about the team. And we see Lefty's Titar. That's pretty common as well. We're just going to keep Roaring because we want to see all of the team. And again, normally you wouldn't have to do this in a team preview-esque format. And so we've basically just seen like the whole team for the most part. Oh my gosh, that's free. It's absolutely free. I'm actually going to surf this one. You want to switch in the before I'll just I'll roar you again. Curse! Aerodactyl. I don't think I've ever seen anyone bust that out. Aerodactyl gets a Sandstorm special defense boost. It's good stuff to see. You switch the before on, but it's not going to get you that much. I should just use Roar. It's fine. I want to see what they send out. Like Swampert, you see like how I talked about Swampert being like in the counter lead department. Like, bro, this guy has like no checks for Swampert. Absolutely no checks. Swampert walks into a bar. There are no checks. You're gonna have, you might have to explode. I don't see a way that like you actually just one shot the Swampert. Zen Headbutt's not gonna do it. Ice Punch ain't doing it either. Yeet. Yeah, we don't get the KO, but like you, you don't do nearly enough. Awesome. So we'll be able to pick up the KO here. Zen Headbutt. Big flinch. Oh, never lucky. Big flinch. We take those. Never, ever lucky. I think it's still worth to save this thing. Um, I'm just going to our own Metagross. All right, we're probably going to outspeed him. As far as we know, he doesn't have anything that's flying. So let's go for an EQ. There's no weakness policies for him. I don't have to worry about it. We haven't seen the last Pokemon, but I still think we're in a really, really good spot. Like, Heatran doesn't want to switch in on this. Titar doesn't want to switch in on this. Vaporeon doesn't want to switch in on it either. So we'll see what they want to do. Titar, you're gone. Yeet. Yeet. Banded, boys. Choice Banded beatdown. Probably going to send out there. Heatran, this is where we switch back to our Swampert fodder and then send out something like Aerodactyl. Awesome. Do we have to? I'm actually okay to stay in. I don't want them setting rocks. Yep, there's the rocks. So we just punish. We just punish for them setting rocks. That's a good way to play. Smeargle last month. You don't see that that often. That's game that we won. Swords Dance. Not in my house, Chief. Mm -mm. Choice ban. Cruise control for cool. That's 607 attack. Yep. That's that's basically going to be it. Like, I think we just hard switch to the Starmie because you're... Oh, actually, let me think about that. Let's actually think about what we need to do here. This Earthquake, it's just going to Acid Armor. So, like, I need to do this correctly. We're going to need to switch in Blissey and put up a Toxic on it. Just a raw Surf. No Acid Armor. That's really, really surprising. I want to see if it subs. There's the Acid Armor. All right, cool, cool. We did. We're fine. Oh, no, we missed. Ah, that sucks. If, you, if we put the Toxic on it, we basically just win the game. They're probably going to switch to Metagross here. Switch Metagross, go, good play. Man, never ever lucky right now. Okay, let's think about what we need to do in this situation then. I don't mind switching in here. Agility Gross, all right, so Agility Gross shouldn't actually outspeed us. It shouldn't outspeed us, but you can bullet punch me. Yeah, almost gets the outspeed. Man, this is starting to become harder than I want it to be. We didn't see Thunder Punch, did we? Ice Punch, so yeah, I'll just go with this. I 
don't care if you switch in the Vaporeon, it's fine. I guess Starmie's an okay mon to have here, because it's just special attack damage. And you see Sandstorm's last him forever. Vaporeon shouldn't really be able to wall out a Starmie. Signal Beam, just kidding, that's not something you see every day. Alright, if we had a Taunt Mon, this is where we'd use it, but we don't. We should be fine with Meteors here. They're too low now. Just gotta hit one Zen Head, but easy peasy. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, cool. That was a pretty good game. It just showed what we, you know, we talked about how to make, like, good counter weeds. We talked about having, like, the usefulness of, like, one big physical sweeper, which is, like, the imprint if we didn't really use this game. And the special sweep of the Strime, which we did kind of use to regain speed control. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this helped. If you guys have any questions or something, you know, maybe I didn't go super in-depth on that you want me to go more in-depth on, think about letting me know. I definitely want to do my best to help you guys get better and help you guys prepare for the Gen 4 meta. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to know more about, uh, you know, Pokemon stuff, we have an amazing Discord. You guys can join the Discord. It's completely free to join the Discord. There's a link to it in the description of this video. And uh, other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.